Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's experiment time. So, with the price of gas these days and uh, different prices around town, I thought it would be a fun experiment to see what the ethanol content here is in LA. So, what we're going to do, and we bought just for, you know, the entertainment value, we bought this, which is a test kit. I love this ethanol testing kit. I mean, it's, it's worth the comedy. It's worth the $12 to spend on this for the comedy, um, test kit. Literally all you have to do is put water in it and you fill it all the way up to here with gasoline. And what that does is, uh, depending on the ethanol content, uh, ethanol absorbs water. So that will, affect where this line is so the more ethanol content i think the higher the the absorption is going to be and uh the separation line will go up you know in my case potentially 15 to 20 percent we're not going to test e85 i don't think we have i think maybe we have one station that has e85 here in la um, but here's the theory uh, which it may or may not be true at all i have no idea um, I have a discount station that's just about a block and a half from me, um, and uh, it's selling premium right now for you know six sixty nine or something. Yes, those are the LA prices. Um, uh, we're going to test um, probably different grades um, as well as different stations. So we're going to test the discount stations, and we're going to test. Uh, we're going to try and find maybe a Beverly Hills station. You know. Uh, you know, $9 a gallon. So, you know, we'll give that a try. And I think uh, it'll be really interesting to see what the results may be. Uh, you know, logic would dictate. Now, remember, this is logic, and, you know, the world doesn't use that anymore. Um, but logic would dictate that the uh, discount gas is going to have a higher ethanol content because it's cheaper. So I might estimate E15 to E20, uh, you know, 20% ethanol. Uh, so uh, for a discount station um and i would expect maybe the more expensive stations it might be interesting maybe we'll see that we you know maybe we're at 20 percent at the more expensive stations then we'll pick you know a, a general station regular kind of prices so uh maybe we'll test five or six different stations so we'll go around and take samples around the city and uh test it out using our fancy uber professional tester just figuring out how i'm gonna do my samples here and i think this will work out perfect these little what are these probably pint this will work out perfect. It'll be more than I need, which is fine. We can just, whatever excess fuel is left over, we'll just uh, dump it uh, into the tank of one of the vehicles. I think I settled on, I'm just going to do 91 octane, just because that's what everything that I have needs. It need, you know, all, all three vehicles, they all use 91. So I think we'll just stick to testing. I don't, I don't think octane level is so important. It's probably going to vary between the octane levels, but, you know uh we'll just stick to one variable so let's just do a quick test here um pulled some fuel out of the mustang that's got a bunch of dirt in it because i used a dirty siphon tube uh that was filled with a bunch of crap so that's no problem um and who knows maybe that'll skew the results but i just want to try this and see how it works we've got our uh, test bottle here which i find comically sealed with nothing in it so we'll have to pop that cherry and then we've got some water here. So the idea is, and it's very simple as it says on the front, you remove it, you fill the water, you fill the gas line up at the top, you put the cap on, you shake it, and you let the tester uh, sit upright and wait for the liquids to separate and read the results. Pretty easy stuff. All right, let's do this. I'll just pop this open with the foil or with the funnel. Pop the foil with the funnel. Okay, got that. Pretty simple instructions here. We got our, our, uh, you know, tap water here, which is just fine. I use this to refill my soldering station. So it doesn't say it needs to be anything special like distilled or anything like that. So let's get this filled up to that water line, which is you can see right there that blue line. It's blue. Perfect. Right at the line. They don't say whether they want the meniscus above or below the line, though. So, all right. Phase one complete. Let's work on phase two here. 
try and do this and not spill the crap that's in the bottom of this thing from that siphon tube. And we just want to fill it all the way up. Okay. That's good. And I only spilled half of it on the bork bench, so that's a win. Now we're going to close this up, shake well. Doesn't say how well to shake, so we'll just shake it and let it bake. I bet that takes a good uh, minute to settle out. Seal that up with our professional DOT approved uh, container. And it is settling. It's very interesting to watch it. It's very interesting. I'm watching the ethanol absorb. I don't really want to move it. I wonder if I can get the camera in a little bit closer here. I'm actually watching it pull it. Very interesting test. It does work. You can see it. We're just below 10% ethanol in this fuel. Which is interesting because I all the fuel that's in the Mustang's tank came from the same gas station. It's all from the discount station just down the street. So it looks to me like it's mostly just settled out now. So we're actually slightly less than 10%. So, you know, maybe my theory is wrong there with uh, the discount stations having the most ethanol content because it's cheap. But I am very curious to see how this pans out. So this is a good little test just, to, just as a a pre-test before we go and do this. So what we'll do is we'll just collect a bunch of sample sizes about like this. Uh, we'll just go around to different gas stations and, and you know, I've got a whole bunch of these little jars. So uh, we'll just pick up a bunch of samples. Maybe we'll do this, you know, five, six, seven times, however many stations I can uh, collect from. Okay, so uh, we're all settled out here and we're just below 10%. So our ethanol content is not quite 10%. I was expecting closer to 15%. So valid test though. I mean, you can absolutely see, you know, I filled it up to the water line and it's that simple. It's just the, the, uh, ethanol does, it, it does absorb into the water. It's hygroscopic. If you know that term, um, whereas the gasoline is not. All right. This is the shell station down the street. So premium is $7 a gallon here. So not low, not as high as we've seen in the city. All right, so now here's my plan. I'm going to test these. Uh, I'm not going to gather them all and then test them. Uh, it's just, it works out better time-wise for me to do it this way. So we collected, you just saw $7 a gallon. Yes, this is California, and I, I marked it, although it's kind of hard to see on my pickle jar here. Shell, $7 a gallon premium. And uh, I'll... Uh, I'll probably put the locations of these. Actually, the location isn't important unless uh, unless I get it from like two shell stations. So I'm just kind of picking stations at random. Uh, like I said, this one's seven dollars a gallon. Um, let's look up the first one that we tested at the beginning of the video, which is a discount station that's just literally a block away from this shell station. And let's see how much that is today. Okay, so the quote discount station down the street is six seventy nine. So it's a good 20 cents cheaper a gallon. And you'll remember we were just under E10. So let's go ahead and test this a little bit more uh, nominally priced, $6.99. That's about nominal, I'd say, for fuel. Let's test that one. And if the audio is not great, I apologize. I took my good mic off of here and I haven't put it back on. So internal mic only. Let's get this filled up with water. As I spill it everywhere, trying to do this one-handed. Okay, that's right at the water line. That's perfect. Let's get some gas and put it in there. Shall we see how much of this I can spill everywhere and make everyone, you know, bust up in laughter about how ridiculous this is? Uh, just a splash more. Well, I overfilled it. I don't think it matters that much, though. I mean, it's right there. So let's uh, shake it up and see where it puts us. It's kind of fun to watch it settle out, you know. So let's make you guys nauseous as I hold the camera here. And let's see what this one settles out at. 
Boy, it's sure looking like it's settling right at about 10%, and I did overfill it with gas just a little bit, so I don't know if that's going to affect it much at all. If anything, I, I think it would give it a false, uh, uh, false reading of higher ethanol content. So we're settling out here, and it's looking pretty good here. There, I can point it out here where the line is. Right there. So it's not quite 10%. So, so far, ethanol content is very, very, very consistent. Um, there, that You can actually see it there in that shot. You can see where that line is. So it's just under 10%. Um, I would have expected it to be a little bit higher these days, um, but so far this is identical to the discount station that we tested. Okay, struggling to find an expensive station. This is Beverly Hills adjacent, so 719 for premium. That's on the upper end of the scale. I actually drove to Beverly Hills and tried to find a higher priced fuel, and it was actually lower than here. So Beverly Hills adjacent, bougie area, 719. Okay. So we got two samples so far. We have our average shell that was $7 a gallon, which I guess is a little bit higher than I thought was average. And our bougie Beverly Hills, really Beverly Hills adjacent, $7.19 a gallon. Um, and I do want to, this was a Union Station too, I should probably write that on here. Unical, 76. Um, I should clarify the Beverly Hills part too. So I looked up on Gas Buddy what the most expensive gas was in the entire area for fuel and I'm talking like all of you know pretty much all of Los Angeles is where I looked and Beverly Hills had a station that's on Santa Monica and Crescent which is you know the heart of you know Rodeo Drive and the you know the total bougie area and uh, it said it was 840 a gallon I said oh great I said let's go get some of that and I get over there and it was seven dollars a gallon for self-serve and then the full service, which I didn't even know full service stations even existed anymore. The full service station was eight forty a gallon. I, I said I don't want any of that. I'm like I want to find the most expensive self-serve. So I did find down the road seven nineteen a gallon. So let's get this into the tester and get it uh, get it red. Okay, so we got bougie Beverly Hills in the in the tank here. And let's see what happens with it. Uh, you know, it takes about a minute for it to settle out. You know what's interesting is it looks like it's settling different to me. But there it goes. The bubbles are all starting to pop. It's very interesting how this how this happens. So already we're looking like we might be over or right at 10%. Um, so let's give it a minute. So if I get a clipboard and a white lab coat, does that mean that I'm somebody important? Somebody that's presumably knowledgeable and you know, official, somebody you might believe, maybe. So yeah, let's get this, you know, maybe I'll find a white lab coat. All right, we are settled out. And what's that, 9% maybe? Oh, went too far, camera doesn't like it. I mean, you could almost call it 10%. You can actually see how the table's not quite level, huh? Let's try that. It's interesting how very consistent the stations almost seem. This is definitely higher, though. I'd call this 9 or 10%. Like, maybe we call that 10%. There's error in how much I put a little bit too much gas in it again, of course, because, you know, I spilled it everywhere. Um, 9 to 10% we're looking at. So, uh, insignificant, however, and got our official, you know, very neatly made out Excel spreadsheet here. Uh, bougie Beverly Hills came in at 719 a gallon, and we're looking at a higher ethanol content potentially, uh, maybe 1%. So insignificant, however, uh, not less. There. We'll just do that with that. We'll just call it 9 to 10. You knew I had to do it. Got to test the Costco gasoline. Okay, we did it. Got the Costco gasoline for six nineteen a gallon. Had to wait in line for it, but we got it. So let's go ahead and test this one. I'm curious. I would expect logic dictating, but then again, nothing is logical anymore uh, that this would have a higher ethanol content. But maybe it won't. 
Uh, Costco has pretty high standards. I believe they have their own uh, refineries for their fuel. So let's see what it does. Okay, we got our Costco sample in there. Just poured it in. We'll give it a little bit better shake here. Let's see what it settles out at. Consistent. Just 100% consistent. We are just shy of E10. Just shy. So, you know, I mean, how many samples is that? About four? Yeah, we did four samples. So let's write this one down here. And we may do more in the future, but, you know, I think that this is a good initial throw at this. Um, 10%, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be E10, and I think that they've been authorized even to go to E15. Uh, I was expecting that we would be in the E15 range or that it wouldn't be as consistent, but I'll, I'll be if it's uh, just right on the money. If anything, the discount was a uh, discount and average shell were maybe a percent point or so lower. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's nothing. It's, it's dead on. Okay. And so we're going to call that, uh, it looks like it's just shy. I'd call it 9%. So, uh, we might play with this in the future. I'd like to test, uh, some fuels up in the San Fernando Valley area. Uh, we tested mainly fuels around the greater uh, metropolitan Los Angeles area. Um, so there are a bunch of discount stations in the valley, um, and it would be good to, to take some samples from a little bit larger area. This is, you know, a large area, but, you know, even better to go further out. So uh, we might do another part to this. I, if I get time, it's a little bit difficult trying to get around and get samples, you know, with everything else that goes on in your life. But uh you know, we might give it a shot. Uh, the, uh, consistency is key here, though. It seems to be that uh, the stations are, are uh, you know, they provide what they're supposed to. Uh, so anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this one up and uh, we might try this uh, again in the future.